with God, when things are returned back to him, it is returned back full, complete, and it would have accomplished that which God sent it out to do. So typically when we think of return to sender, we think of how mail works. And if it goes to the wrong person, that is returned back to the original owner. Or if it goes to the wrong address, it gets turned back into the hands of the person who sent it. And while that is the case, usually it comes back unopened in the same condition that it was sent out. However, I want to appeal to you that with God, return to sender is completely different. With God, when things are returned back to him, it is returned back full, complete, and it would have accomplished that which God sent it out to do. And the scripture where we find this is in Isaiah 55. Isaiah 55, 10 through 11, and it says, As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater. So is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire. You see, God's words have life, they have depth, they have meaning, they have action, and they will accomplish that which he spoke. And that goes for his people. If he speaks something over your life, it will accomplish what he sent it out to do. God's words will not return void. It will return to the sender full, complete, and mature. As believers, when the Lord presses upon our hearts to pray in faith, to pray when those things that are not, to pray them as though they are, to pray in faith, then we must do it believing and trusting that God's will will be accomplished as he set it out to do. And the hard thing about faith is the waiting period, the time at which the word has gone out and it is on its way to do those things that God spoke for it for it to do. But waiting and trusting in the Lord is hard. That's the hard part where we have to lean in into our faith and we have to lean and depend on God and God alone. There are times in the waiting period, the enemy tries to get in and to block and to cause the things to be delayed, but God's word is not denied. No weapon forged against the plan and the purposes of God shall prosper. Okay. And here is a promise in God's word that we can lean in and depend on and declare in times like that. In Ezekiel 12, 28, it says, therefore say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. None of my words will be delayed any longer. Whatever I say will be fulfilled, declares the sovereign Lord. And I want you to know that we are coming into a season of fulfilled promises. We who have been waiting on the Lord shall renew our strength. We will run and not get weary. We will walk and not faint. We will declare the promises of the Lord and we shall see them come to pass. Amen. This is the season of the field of dreams where the things that we've dreamed and waited for, we will walk in and we will see those places. We will experience those spaces. The place is a promise. The places of fullness, the places where dreams are realized. This is a season of fulfilled promises for the faithful. And the key word here is faithful. In 1 Samuel 3.19, this is what it says. And Samuel grew and the Lord was with him and did not let none of his words fall to the ground. Even you, his chosen child, not even the words you speak that are in and of the father's will will fall to the ground. Like the prophet Samuel, as we continue as upright people of God, the words he speaks through us will be fruitful and not fall to the ground, but will accomplish that which God sent for them to do. 
Our lives as yielded vessels will be fruitful and bring forth bountiful harvest and to uplift his name and his name alone. It will not be accomplished by might or force, but by the spirit of God. Our lives will yield the fruit God promised it would. No more delays, no more denies. The windows of heaven are open above the people of God to do the will of him who sent us. Okay. God's promises for his children are what? Yes. And amen. Matthew 24 and 34 says, verily, I say unto you, This generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Praise the Lord that God's words shall not pass away, but they will accomplish. Because you know why? God's words are full and active. Let us look in Hebrews 4 and 12. It says, for the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart. God's words are active. They produce, they create, they put things in motion. God's words are alive and they are active. And we should have this faith that what the Lord spoke will come to pass because it is he who set the heavens and the stars in the sky and separated the water from the earth and created with his words and accomplish day and night. They accomplish his words, accomplish the heavens and the earth. His words accomplish water and sky. His words accomplish man and beast. Every day we see the assurance of God when we see the sun in the sky and by night the moon in the sky as the lesser light. Seeing his creation is to remind us that his words will not return to him void, but they will accomplish everything that they were sent out to do. May our lives and our acts of worship, when they are returned back to the sender, be a sweet smelling savor before the Lord's nostrils. May he be pleased with what our lives and our actions have accomplished. May they be full. May they be complete. May they be bountiful, full of the measure of that which he planned from the foundations of the earth. Let us proclaim only what the Lord is saying, so that when we speak, our words may accomplish what the Father set out for them to accomplish, because we spoke only what we heard the Father saying. And right now, I have a few prayers that I would like to pray over the people of God, a prayer for the season of fulfilled promises for the faithful. Many of God's people have been tired, stressed, exhausted. Life seems like it's been throwing things at us left and right, but many of us have continued being faithful before the Lord, and we are coming into a season of fulfilled promises. But here are a few prayers. And first, I want you to know that you can breathe again. You can hope again. You can trust in the Lord. God is still in the business of keeping, of protecting, of providing for his people. You can breathe again. You can hope again, and you can trust in the Lord. And here's a few prayers that I want to pray over us, that we continue in these things and that God will be with us. The first prayer that I would like to pray is a prayer of obedience, that we will continue in obedience. And the word I want to also use here is transitional obedience. Because God has been shifting us and and moving us at quicker, faster rates. It seems like everything is just moving along so quickly. And sometimes we don't have time. God is requiring us to be obedient in the moment. In every transition, he wants us to be obedient and to go where he tells us to go, when he tells us to go, even when we don't have time to think it through. So my prayer for the people of God and for his faithful is to continue in obedience. And prayer number two, 
is for total reliance on God. I pray that for you in your life, that you will continue to rely on God and God alone, that you won't be relying on your job, that you won't be relying on stocks and bonds, that you won't be relying on the stock market, that you won't be relying on friends and family, but your reliance will be totally on God because things change, people change, things in the world change, but God will never change. God is a God of reliance. We can put our reliance upon him. We can rely on God. And so my prayer is that you will continue to walk in total obedience and total reliance on God, that you will rely on him for everything that you need, everything that you need, that you will rely on God and God alone. And prayer number three is a heart of thanksgiving, because I believe many of the people of God have felt like, can I breathe? Can I, is this real? Yes, God is still a God who can bless and you can be thankful for what you see. God wants his people to be thankful for what they have. Thankful for his blessings. We should always return to him to say thank you and have a heart of thanksgiving. Through the storms, be thankful. Through the pain, be thankful. And through the blessings, stay thankful, okay? Have a heart of thanksgiving no matter what you're going through. And prayer number four is for an expected and excited heart. Child of God, you can breathe again. You can hope again. You can be expectant again, and you can be excited for the things that God wants to do in your life. Yes, he still wants to bless you. He still wants to keep you. He still wants to prosper you. He still wants to hold you. God wants us to be excited and expected for the things that he's promised over our lives. If he's promised it, it shall come to pass. If he spoke it, it shall come to pass. Have an expected and excited heart and believe again and hope again, because when the Lord speaks a word, it shall come to pass. And prayer number five is a prayer of open heavens above the faithful. God has open heavens above the faithful. And in this season, he wants you to be expected, excited, and I'm praying that God will open the heavens, the windows of heaven above his people and pour out blessings upon his people and that you would know that you are loved, kept and assured by God and God alone. So I pray that this word was an encouraging word for you today. I pray that you know that God, with God, return to sender. Things are to return back to him, not void. They should be full, complete and mature. And when the things that we speak, when we speak the will of the father and only the will of the father, things shall come back in our lives full, complete and mature. So have hope again today. Trust in him again today. Relax and release in him today. You can breathe. God still has your back. He hasn't forgotten about you. He hasn't forgotten about the promises over your life. God is a promise keeper. So I pray that today you will be blessed and remember that things that go back to the Lord that are returned to him, that are returned to the sender will return full, complete and mature. God bless you. Have a blessed day. Okay. God bless you.